TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, this channel. This is the best ever food review. I watch this channel often. And he's doing a series in the UK. And I'm late to the party. So I'm just going to watch all of these, man. Not all of them in one video, but I'm going to catch up. Britain's Battle of the Beef. Dirt cheap to top tier. Talk to me. This is a oh, yeah. Don't forget, we do got twitch.com. That's where we go live. The link's right here. The username. And we also got a Patreon as well, man. Talk to me. Beef Wellington, and it was beautifully constructed here at Baba Ricard in the city of London, and it costs over $120. Today, I'm on a mission to explore the world of British beef at three different places with three different price tags. Oh my gosh, just absolutely soaking everything with the gravy. And by the end of this video, you'll see the most opulent piece of beef in London that money can buy. It's a long process involving a lot of steps. You need to be a bit skilled to do it. But first, something much more affordable. Not gonna lie, I seen somebody cook a beef Wellington in a dorm room. <laughs> you know that dude that be doing the TikToks? Yeah, on his dorm room. So. Portable. A classic British meat dish that's been losing popularity for one simple reason. People don't like it anymore. And I'm here to see just how bad or good it really is. Liver is and onions. Well, this this is one of those foods that's almost like a punchline in the USA. Like the food that people don't necessarily want to eat. Is this a young man's dish or is this a classic old dude's food? This is an old dude's food. We've been serving it since the 1970s and I think the history of it goes back much, much further than that. Man, my mom used to make that. We used to eat that when I was growing up. It was good. I had no problems with liver or nothing. Lario runs Bar Bruno a long-standing establishment that's still serving up this traditional delicacy here in the heart of London. What is it about onions that go so well with liver? I think it's just a marriage, as they say in food. Onion is quite caramelized, and with the meat flavor, it's uh, it's really good. To start, the liver is... ...say in food, onion is quite caramelized, and with the meat flavor... This is dog in the background urinating. <laughs> as his owner looks up in the camera like, oh, my bad. Flavor, it's, uh, it's really good. To start, the liver is fried on a flat top, seasoned simply with a sprinkle of salt. We typically use lamb's liver because we find that the flavor is a little bit more subtle. The other animal livers are a little bit more poignant. He's, why are you so polite? You're not going to offend a cow. <laughs> more gamey. Gamey. More pungent, have an yeah. intense... I don't know what my... Probably, the, what's the typical cow? Smell to them. Yeah, Next, cow. unsmoked bag bacon is fried to perfection along with the onions. I grew up with this dish, so I enjoy it. Even back then, you're like, Mom, what's for dinner tonight? Liver and onions, what's your reaction? I think when I was very young, probably the reaction wasn't so great, but I grew to like it. Just like beer? Exactly. I also didn't like beer when I was six. No, neither did I. But when I was seven, really into it. Joining the dish, a British favorite, mash, also known as mashed potatoes. Finally, the dish is served with a rich gravy and with a drizzle of Worcestershire sauce on top. Now there's so many food trucks. See, I never had this. See, then the, the way they make it, it hit like a little bit different. I ain't never seen this as an option on no British menus at these places in America. Other people's countries coming. There's an Asian food right next to Chinatown. Is it possible that... If y'all didn't know, I explore British foods on my TikTok, so... And a generation from now, there is no more liver and onions. I think it's a real risk. We've seen liver sales go down quite considerably over the years. We're trying to keep the British cuisine alive, so to speak. So I'm hoping that trying it here, they will acquire a taste for it and we'll be serving it many years to come. Nigel, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. My first question, what's with the flowers? With over 4.5 million followers, Nigel has become prominent in the food section of TikTok by way of brunch. This is something that my grandma used to do all the time. She used to have to wow. saying, uh, men don't get a lot of flowers. Oh, mm. kind of how it started, but yeah. So your food niche is brunch. Brunch. A brunch where maybe you drink and get drunk. Yes. As you should with most brunches. If there's no cocktail, it's not, is it really a brunch, you know? During the 18th... Is it, I could be wrong, but I feel like Chicago's known for brunch. We be so drunk at brunch, like it's be ridiculous. In the 19th centuries in London, like liver and party. onions became popular among the working class because it was affordable, available, and simple. I've had it before, but definitely its popularity was big in the near the late 90s. That's when it kind of like dipped down. What do you think is the reason for that? People discovered other good food? Yeah, I, yes. First, I want to try this mash. 
that's delicious. Well cooked onion. The gravy just brings it all together. All about the gravy. I often say if you want to know the cuisine of a country, you need to know the history of the country. Even just looking at this plate, you can kind of see where things kind of diverged between Britain and America. At one point, this food became famous in the US as well. So I always found that really interesting. And of course, I think you can tell a country by their bacon. Absolutely true. So in our last episode, we covered breakfast. That breakfast happened to include streaky bacon, which is what we call bacon. <laughs> Here, you have something called back bacon. Now, I had to look this up in the dictionary to make sure this was technically bacon. It turns out it is. It is. All right, Londoners, you got me on a technicality this time. <laughs> Cheers. I like that. It's almost a little bit more hammy to me. And there's certainly no crisp. It's a little bit more chewy. But pork is pork. I love pork. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely more hammy. Because it's thick. It, it reminds me of ham and, as, and the bite. The bacon, uh, the UK bacon. The UK style back bacon. We got a few. It definitely doesn't feel like bacon when I'm eating it. It feels like a piece of ham. Massive pieces of liver. The time has come. <laughs> we cannot put it off any longer. This is my first time ever trying this dish. I'm so excited. Cheers. Hmm, I'm not sure what I was expecting. Mm. This is a dish for a mature gentleman. This is a dish where you fight your instinct to eat something yummy and you eat something that's good for you. I do think the onions <laughs> pair well with it, but there's nothing. You fight your instincts to eat something yummy. He just called it nasty very politely. Magical that happened here. This tastes like liver. And I think it's good when you mix all the elements together. You've got some gravy, some liver, some onion, and then you kind of use the bacon to cleanse the palate here and there. <laughs> the price of everything here is a giant plate, 10.5 pounds. How do you feel about that price? For Central London, bargain. You're not going to get anything to this degree. A plate this size, something this filling. So reasonable. Definitely. I'm good. I'm not even going to lie. Like, if, if I found it, like why in my search for British food in America, I try it just for TikTok purposes, but I, I and I'd finish it, but I, I don't think I. It doesn't look the way he just described it just threw me off. Listen, this is gonna be the absolute cheapest thing we eat all day. At our next location, we're gonna be trying something called the Sunday roast. Let's do it. Sunday roast. Speaking of Sunday roast, I'm gonna be trying it this week. Of course, it won't be on a Sunday. But I will drop it on a Sunday. But I will try it this week. Uh, I found a restaurant, serves it. I'm going to go there, eat it. <laughs> From our first location, we're really stepping things up. I'm talking much more variety, more meat, and a much heftier price tag. Coming in at nearly $65. But there's a catch. We'll be trying a meal you can only find on Sundays. Sunday roast is a very traditional dish in the UK and it revolves around roasted meats with a huge array of trimmings all the way around the side, a massive feast. But more than that, an opportunity for family and friends to get together on a Sunday, catching up and having lunch together. It's a thing that you do on Sunday in the UK. You go out for a Sunday roast. Meet Gordon Kerr, the founder of Black... Smart. I like, I like that, man. It brings the family. America, we have dinner on Sundays, but like, it's not like that deep. Blog Chop House. Put her there. Welcome. Chop Houses originated in the UK in the 1600s, and still, they're known for serving hearty traditional British dishes with an emphasis on meat, chops, and steaks. Right now, we're here for the Sunday roast. It's something I've never done, and something actually I'd never even heard of until coming here. Sunday roasts go back even farther than Chop Houses, back to medieval times. Every Sunday after church, it was common for the community to gather together for a meal. For a classic Sunday. Okay, okay, if that's the history of it, I remember going to church growing up and we always eat after rather it was going to an old country buffet which is a obviously a buffet style restaurant in the in the midwest i think it was i'm not sure if it was all over the midwest but it definitely was in chicago it's out of business unfortunately now but but yeah fire and then mom my mom would cook or grandma would cook yeah yeah we do that a roast what is required you need roasted meats roast potatoes and a range of roasted vegetables and then you definitely need yorkshire puddings i cannot get a grip on what pudding is in this country i had black pudding which was a sausage and then the yorkshire pudding looks like a popover to me what does pudding mean just like a good burger needs the perfect bun there is no sunday roast without the yorkshire pudding crafted by baking beef drippings together with a chilled batter of eggs full fat milk and flour pudding can mean a variety of things here pudding can mean dessert sweet after the meal thing a yorkshire pudding is a savory pancake raised up a great vessel for meats typically for gravy if you had too many yorkshire pudding 
things. Yeah. A great leftover thing the next day would be that some of the leftover roasted meats in a Yorkshire pudding, gravy on top as a sandwich. That sounds good. Preparing a Sunday roast can be an extensive process, often starting days in advance. But here at Black Lock, I made one. I made one from scratch, but I want to try restaurants, so yeah. They take their meat prep to another level by aging the meat before it's ever kissed by a single flame. Beef is 55 days aged. We've got pork, which is 21 days, and we've got lamb, which is 28. When meat is hanging in the aging chambers, we're exceeding the time so guests can experience tender meat on the plate. When Sunday rolls around each week, it's time for the team in this kitchen to get to work bright and early. The aged meat is seasoned simply with salt, then roasted slowly and lowly over an open fire. Large joints of beef, pork, and lamb are placed on racks using charcoal from English oak below, gently roasting the meat for four to five hours. This method alone. I feel like the cooking process alone is what makes it this expensive. $65. That's rough, but. Allows the meat to develop a delicious bark on the. What's the portion size? The outside, while remaining exceptionally tender and juicy on the inside. We're doing nearly 500 guests over Sunday roast. Wow. Why does it take it so long when I'm not getting anywhere? After the initial roasting of the pork joints, the pork skin is removed and roasted once again in the oven to achieve maximum crispiness, while the pork meat itself is sliced into eatable slabs. The beef is roasted to a rare. Sorry, that pork don't look done to me. Can you eat pork like medium? I thought you couldn't. Doneness, so you can still hear the faint echoes of the cow's final moo. Finally, the lamb, a meat option I fear will not appear on a Waffle House menu anytime soon. But for the British, it remains a popular choice, celebrated for its rich flavor and succulent texture. For this restaurant, it has to be ready to go quickly when people order. What is the biggest challenge here in serving a perfect Sunday roast to a huge crowd of people? Logistically, being very organized from early hours of the day. What time did you wake up this morning? Five-ish. Okay, not bad. So you slept in? Yeah, of course, of course. Being passionate about it. Like you're doing your job, I'm doing my job. We are passionate about it. I'm, I'm so full of passion. Our $65 feast begins with layers of roasted cabbage and carrots. Next, the essential Yorkshire pudding, which gets stuffed with roasted potatoes, with even more potatoes on the side. Now for the main event. Beautiful slabs of beef, lamb, and pork are meticulously arranged. I'm not gonna lie, man. The layout of this is it's looking, it's looking peak. I understand the price point. This plate is huge. Forming a meat mountain. Atop that tender protein, some crispy cracklings, and a shower of salt. But this Sunday roast is not complete without a... Yeah, this is crazy. Where's the gravy? Generous helping of gravy on the side. It looks crazy. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Ah, yeah, 65 bones. Yeah, I'd do it. I'd do it. Crazy, right? This looks insane. It's a mountain. But you know about the Sunday roast? Absolutely. I want to back up a little bit, talking about your story. You were born in a country known as Malawi, and that is in Southeast Africa. But your name is Nigel. <laughs> Painfully British. Can you explain that story? My dad went to school here as part of an exchange yeah. program. He met a guy, and the guy was like the nicest guy ever, and that guy was called Nigel. He thought it was a cool thing. So yeah, there's something called the Nigel Festival. Really? It happens once a year because the name started dying out. And if your name is Nigel, you can go and you will get a free pint. You moved here when you were four. How how British cool. do you consider yourself? More than I'd like to admit. In that case, what does Sunday roast mean to you? You need two elements for a Sunday roast. The first one is nostalgia. The second is hangover. Nice. That's why we have a... Our... I'm working on the hangover right now. <laughs> I'm getting one. Oh, okay. There's no nostalgia when I eat it, obviously. Um, but I did not have a hangover either. I gotta redo it. I gotta go drunk. Oh, go. Okay. I'm getting pointers. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I think we should try some of this out. I want to start with the cracklings on top. Oh lord, it soaked up all that pork oil. Tons of salt on there, it's really good. Do you want to give it like a little dip? Give a little bit of a dip. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be a very rich meal. Onion gravy. Oh my gosh, just absolutely soaking everything with the gravy. There you go. There's pork, there's lamb, and there's beef. I think we should work our way up to the beef. We already had the pork cracklings, but now we can just try this beautifully roasted pork. Oh, is it? <laughs> I don't know if I could... I'm not a fan of that much pork. I just couldn't. Uh, <laughs> no, no, you don't have to eat as much as me. I'm a pig eating a pig right now. 
Oh my god, the gravy just gives so much life to everything. Shines through, it's the star. Super savory, a wonderfully deep, beefy flavor. Whenever you watch any type of time period piece, one thing that they usually get wrong is the amount of meat. If you're trying to really define British cuisine, it'll be based around root vegetables, carrots, potatoes, cabbage. Meat would usually be a luxury. Lamb is something I really admire about the UK because in the US, we're not even adventurous enough to really eat lamb or sheep or mutton, but here, it's still very commonly eaten. We eat lamb. Mm, well salted, well seasoned. A little bit gamey in a good way. Some people who are new to lamb, they don't like that kind of funky lamb taste. I love that. It's got personality. Yes. It's got a little bit of oomph. So for you- Maybe I don't eat lamb. Maybe we don't. I don't, okay. You, you said to eat Sunday roast, it requires a bit of nostalgia. What is the element of nostalgia for you? When you first come to the UK, your first real Sunday roast experience is almost like an indoctrination into British culture. I have friends who just moved to the UK quite recently. They all remember their first Sunday roast. Oh, wow. And that becomes the nostalgia of the element of it. So do you remember your first? Yes, absolutely. How old were you? Eight years old. It was my neighbor's house. They were Irish and I felt so accepted into the culture. Well, I'm told that if you're eating this, you also have to have the Yorkshire pudding. Absolutely. Use that as a cup, put all the meat in the gravy in. We grab a big slab of beef, throw that on top. Oh, this is not a mistake. I'm gonna throw a little everything. Yeah, this, now this, this looks good. The build look crazy. This is a top tier build of, of, of Yorkshire Sunday roast material. Right down here. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I don't think I chewed that enough. <laughs> I ate that like a snake. That was very satisfying. Everything gets the right amount of salt and flavor after you just douse it with that gravy. This is outstanding. This is my first Sunday roast, and maybe this will be my first bit of nostalgia. Nice. And you'll be the Brit who introduced me to it. That's so special. You're gonna carry that forever. Thank you, this was really amazing. Immortalized. Well, you didn't actually cook anything. <laughs> I know. It's nice to share a meal with you, is what I mean. You just kind of showed up. Yeah, I just turned up. Free meal. Cheers. From here, I'm saying goodbye to Nigel and meeting up with Dominique at a restaurant where we'll try London's most expensive beef. I look good. I'm not gonna lie. For I, like, I started off at sixty-five dollars. I was a little bit standoffish, but you know what I'm saying. Minus the pork for me, or cook it more, and I'm good. I, I pay it. It looked worth it. Dish coming in at over one hundred twenty dollars. Can you actually eat that? It looks amazing. Beef Wellington. It's a food that never have. I've never had beef Wellington. It sounds like it has good credit. It does. Chef JC is the head chef of Bob Bob Ricard, a fine dining establishment renowned for its classic British and French cuisine. If you had to explain what a beef Wellington is in simple terms, what is it? It's a beef fillet wrapped in duck cell, then wrapped in puff pastry. If somebody came into your restaurant and asked for a vegan beef Wellington, no question over. Historically, this yeah they don't play that type of energy out there. Only in America you can go in and act with some bullshit like that. Not anywhere else. Dish was served to the first Duke of Wellington in the 1800s. These days, beef Wellington is often reserved for special occasions. If you have a birthday, for example, or someone bringing his partner for a date. What about a breakup dinner? It's not possible. Why can't you? See, it's too nice. You can't. The beef Wellington ain't exactly something you can easily whip up at home. It's the height of British beef presentation, and any one misstep in the detailed making process could ruin the whole thing. What are the nightmares that you've seen? You don't have to say it was you who did it. Oversearing the beef at the beginning or a wrong chilling time as well. We're gonna sear it and chill. If you don't chill it properly, it will start to cook. And then what do you do? Throw it away? We don't throw food, we give to the staff. Well, that sounds good to me. For this dish, Chef JC uses 21 day aged Angus Scotch beef. Today, we're gonna try to make it quite fast, but usually we do that over at least two days. Two days? Because because we like to chill the beef and then roll in pastry and leave in the fridge overnight to set. We have two and a half hours. I know, that'll work. Okay. The beef fillet is seasoned simply with salt and pepper before searing. Let's talk about the beef fillet. Sorry, we say fillet in the US. I am a cow. Okay. Point to my fillet. At the back. In the back. There. Oh, so like, do people call that a sirloin? For pork, we call that tenderloin. A very lean cut. And there is only two by each cow. Mm, just like the testicles. Indeed. <laughs> Oh, bro. Do you guys have that on the menu here? Definitely not. So now we're gonna sear the beef we're gonna use for the Wellington. Is this guy French? It will give you that color around a crust. It will keep the moisture inside. Put a generous amount of butter here. Garlic and then a little spring of thyme, okay? This is just to add a little layer of flavor and an even coloring all around. That's it, and then I don't want to push the cooking too much, so I'm just going to pull it away, and then it's going to be ready to be chilled. While the beef chills, our chef prepares another crucial component of the dish. It's the mushroom stuff, right? 
the duck cells. It's a French term that refers to a combination of chestnut mushrooms, shallots, and garlic, all sautéed together in vegetable oil and Modera wine, cooked until that sounds good. Like, I feel like I could eat this by itself. Like, this is good. I like mushrooms. I don't know if I told it. You gotta know that. The liquid has reduced, then minced to form a paste-like consistency. Next, the beef fillet is coated with egg yolk, which acts as an adhesive or food glue for the subsequent layers. On a thin layer of brick pastry, the prepared duck cells is spread out then wrapped around the beef fillet. This assembly is allowed to cool and rest for some time before adding two more layers of pastry. Right now, the step we're gonna do, we're gonna lay the puff pastry down and we're gonna roll inside the puff pastry. Egg wash it lightly so that will stick our Wellington inside right down the middle and I'm just gonna roll it. Not too tight, I don't want a duck cell inside to spread everywhere but yeah I, I could never make this it's too it's too you need too much patience I don't have that nicely tight that's it ready to chill a little bit after chilling the beef wellington is ready for its final layer of pastry the outside is first brushed with an egg wash then wrapped in a lattice pastry adding an elegant visual flourish the entire assembly is coated once more with egg yolk to ensure a golden crust upon baking Bro did this with so much ease. He do this on a daily basis thousands of times. After baking, the welly is brushed with brown butter to add richness and gloss to the pastry. Oh my god, this one look delectable. The whole thing is then allowed to rest for just as long as it was cooked. This meticulous preparation explains why it takes at least two days to perfect this dish. Dominique, Sunny. thank you for joining me. You're a cook, a cookbook author, entrepreneur. Did I miss anything? Uh, mom of three. If we were on daytime TV, I would say, how do you do it all? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. There's a lot of laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Dominique is the author of two cookbooks and founder of The Wolf's Kitchen, offering a variety of sauces and condiments. What's really special about this place is they have a champagne button. This is living the dream. I need one of these in my house. Yes, yeah, so do I. We're celebrating September. Oh, there's no ding. Ah, but if you look up here, we are at table 37. The champagne has it all. Well, okay. The glasses have arrived. It does feel like we're in first class right now. Cheers. How much Cheers. is that? That's way better than airplane champagne. They're gonna slice it at the station over here on the side and they're gonna deliver it to us. It's not supposed to be hanging around under a hot lamp in the kitchen. The idea is to have the most enjoyable experience possible, which is to have it really fresh. Oh. It's gorgeous. Perfectly cooked. You can see where you seared the meat and then the yeah. beautiful gradient going from brown to yeah. red. Yes. Oh, a truffle jus. Oh, only on half. I like it. It looks incredible. And I can yeah, that looks, that looks amazingly eye-catching. Like, I've never had one of these. I'm looking forward to it. I might save my, my uh, uh, Beef Wellington experience for the UK when I get there. Um, but this looks great. Cannot wait to eat it. Let's try it out. Oh, that is slicing like butter. So you want the beef. She cutting that thing with a butter knife. And you want oh. the pastry all in one bite. And you've got some of that jus. Yeah. You soak it up. Cheers. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the beef is hidden. It's so perfectly cooked. That was heavenly. It also feels rich but light at the same time. Yeah, exactly. That's a great way to describe it. It's a paradox. It's so impressive. It's so soft and succulent, mm. juicy. The pastry just has that perfect amount of crisp on it. And the richness of the pastry, but it's only a thin amount of pastry. I'm so, I just ate. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm not going to eat nothing, but like, dang. Really flaky, but almost dissolving on my mm. tongue. Yeah, it's magic, isn't it? All right, you keep talking, I'll keep eating. I'm not letting mine go cold. Mm. It's very satisfying, and it's not like it's a dynamic range of flavor. It's not like when if you eat Thai food or something like yeah, that, where yeah. it's pulling in different directions. It's not a mix of tangy, sweet, sour. It's mostly savory, but it's just done as well as it can be done. This is like fine dining, perfectly executed. All right, I'm just going to finish all So Beef Wellington is fine dining. Okay. I thought I'd seen it like... Mm. You 122 is a little wild are half Thai. You even have a cooking book that reflects a lot of Asian recipes. How different is Asian cooking compared to British cooking? I cook mostly Asian food, I'll be honest, just because I love those flavors. And I think British food is, is a little bit simpler, perhaps. I just think Britain now is so diverse in terms of the what you can get. You know, sushi only came in here about maybe in 
noughties. Now my kids have been growing up on sushi, so British food has definitely come a long way. I feel like in the past more perhaps British food had a stigma of being <laughs> simple, potentially bland, maybe heavy. It seems like the food itself has evolved over time. I think there is a global sort of fusion happening as well. There's definitely inspiration from other cuisines that are coming in. I mean, I think one of the Britain's most popular dishes is Indian food, the chicken tikka masala, for yeah. example. So I think as a nation, I'm not sure it's as clear cut as saying British food anymore. I think it's mm. a complete mix. I think when it comes to British cuisine, I'm still learning about it and I have a lot to learn. What's fun about this is that this is elevated to the maximum, a meticulously curated and crafted dish, and it really doesn't get much better than this. I need a TV show. This was amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much. And hopefully one of my friends could come with me to the UK because I'm going to be overwhelmed with how much I have to film. I might get it done, but like I'd rather have like I'd rather him come with me. He's a professional camera person, so it's So the the butter itself, you hide in your face a lot. I don't want to see the loopers. Third table 30. Being in it. Points. I had a very affordable liver and onions. I had a very medium priced Sunday roast and I had a fairly expensive beef wellington. My goal was not only to learn about taking in meat in London, but also to choose which, Pause. which meat gave me the most bang for my buck. And the answer- It gotta be the second option for sure. There is. The Sunday, Sunday roast. roast. Yes. Honestly, it was a tough call. The beef wellington crafted with such skill and precision. But the thing is, it costs about four times the price of the Sunday roast. If you get a Sunday roast for one person with all the food, it's like 26 pounds, slightly more than 30 bucks. That is the meat that gave me the most bang for my buck. I need Pause again. You stop saying meat and bang together. Some seriously, nah, for real. Watch. <laughs> Before we go, I want to say a huge thank you to our two special guests in this video. First of all, Nigel. You can find Nigel. Yeah, salute to them, man. Salute to them, man. I'm coming soon. I, I'm gonna make my. I, I just want it to be good when I come in. I might upgrade cameras. I might go crazy. Like I want to be in the game. Tia, leave a like, comments for. I'm gone.